And here comes Jennings and Max Kellerman. It is markedly counterintuitive that a fighter of such limited experience would style himself a cerebral thinking man's heavyweight who starts from a defensive perspective and tries to gradually break his opponents down. And like Perez, here in Jennings, we also have a fighter of a type. American heavyweight, multi-sport athlete, at least in high school, for whatever reason, didn't get to the highest level of any other sport, picks up boxing late, is nevertheless able to come a long way and compete on a high level. But so far, those types of heavyweights have fallen short when they take that final step up to the top of the division. And if that's Mike Perez, Jennings is gonna try to buck that trend. If he can win this fight, he may be in line for a shot at the one title in the heavyweight division not held by Vladimir Klitschko. Obviously, the same is true for Mike Perez. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, from the most famous venue for sports and entertainment in the world, Madison Square Garden, New York City, New York, USA. K2 Promotions and Gary Shaw Productions are proud to present an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment live on HBO. This first contest presented in association with Antonio Leonard Productions. Sponsored by Expo 2017, Tesna Bank and Hortiza Vodka. All bouts sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission. This next bout sanctioned by the World Boxing Council President Mauricio Sullivan, supervisor at ringside, Alberto Leon. This is recognized by the WBC as a heavyweight elimination contest. The three judges at ringside, Glenn Feldman, Joseph Pasquale, and Tom Schreck. And inside the ring, referee in charge of the action, Harvey Dog. And now, 10 rounds of boxing, two undefeated heavyweights, Somebody's all has got to go. Fighting out of the blue corner with trainer Fred Jenkins, wearing red and white official weight, 222, one half pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 18 fights, 18 victories, including 10 knockouts from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA, North Philly to be exact. The undefeated heavyweight contender, Brian. Bye-bye, Jenny! And fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, Adam Booth, wearing green, white, and gold, officially weighing in at 242, one quarter pounds. His professional record, also outstanding. 20 victories, including 12 wins by knockout with one draw. Originally from Cuba, now living, training, and fighting out of Cork, Ireland, the undefeated contender, Mike the Rebel Perry. Okay, guys, we already went over the instructions. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck. Good heavyweight matchup at the big room at Madison Square Garden. Jim, this is not just to see who can challenge for Vitaly's vacant belt, but I think also to see if someone here tonight can make us imagine that there's actually an interesting challenger for Vladimir Klitschko, someone who can challenge him in a way in which he hasn't been challenged in years. Jennings is outspoken in saying that he wants to fight Vladimir. He goes so far as to say, I'm the number two heavyweight. Everybody knows Vladimir's number one. That's why I want him. Meanwhile, just to correct one thing you've heard so far, this is not a 10 round fight because it's a title eliminator. It is scheduled for 12 rounds. Neither fighter has appeared in a 12 round fight before. And the response of the crowd, incidentally, in, uh, was indicative of the fact that some of the people who have shown up here tonight are here because of Jennings. There was a vocal response to his introduction by Michael Buffer. 
Now, this fight could start off at a relatively slow pace, Max. Perez looked like a very fast counterpuncher, an active counterpuncher against Abdusalama. But a close look at counter or, uh, copy box numbers from his other fights suggests that he fights at the pace established by his opponent. And Jennings is a guy who likes to get a good long look, usually, at the beginning of the fight. Perez is attacking a little bit right now, and that falls in line with what trainer Adam Booth said to us yesterday when he said, they both like to counter, I think Mike is going to have to attack. But Perez, his style, his temperament is not one of an attacking fighter. And you might say he suffers from the curse of the gifted. Bach, he's good at boxing. He has a deep background, as we mentioned, in the amateurs and now even in the pros. And he, as a result, sometimes coasts, as the talented sometimes do. When his opponent forces the pace, though, he's responded. Jennings, those who like Jennings in this fight, feel that he has that something inside him, that competitive spirit, that'll be able to overcome Perez's experience advantage. And there's a vast experience difference. Perez had hundreds of amateur fights. Jennings had 14. On the other hand, Jennings made it to the National Golden Gloves Heavyweight Final five months after putting on gloves for the first time. It's amazing. It's an extraordinary achievement. Amazing. He's an athlete. It's interesting that you pointed out Jennings is of a type, and it's undeniable that he fits the same profile as a variety of other American heavyweights who have started relatively late and came to boxing from other sports. But he's quite adamant in saying, don't root me with those guys. Don't define me as a football player. I may have come to boxing late, but I am all fighter. I've never been dedicated to any other sport the way I am to this. Sure, but, but as was the case with some recent American heavyweights, athletic, um, multi-sport athlete, at least in high school, undersized for a Klitschko, you would think. Able to pick up boxing very quickly. Can he continue his upward trajectory tonight against Perez? Perez was able, it looks, to outspeed him in that first round, for what it's worth. There's Annette Jennings, Brian Jennings' grandmother, at ringside. One of the many who made the trip up from North Philadelphia to watch Brian Jennings, who works at a I'm federal sorry, bank in Philadelphia. Yeah. Deep breath. You got to do a lot of faking, a lot of faking. All right? You're getting down low, you got to body. Start touching now, don't wake the ladies. You keep your hands up. Right, be smart. Be smart. Not a lot of faking, okay? A lot of faking. Mm -hmm. All right? Be smart. Good Deep breath. In case you're wondering where you've seen Adam Booth before, he was the trainer of David Hay, trained David Hay in Hay's failed effort against Vladimir Klitschko in Hamburg three years ago. He also has recently been training Andy Lee in Lee's attempt at resurgence in the middleweight division and helped Lee to Lee's comeback knockout victory on the undercard of Cotto Martinez a couple months ago. Relatively inactive first round. Jennings landed six punches by CompuBox count. Perez landed seven. They both landed at exactly the same rate, 20%. Now it looks like Perez got it in his mind to slowly increase that pressure on Jennings. Let him go, let him go. Much more active with his hands and more aggressive with his feet. Good quick right hand inside by Jennings. Yep, Perez, we've seen um, Jim in recent fights for a guy with his background and considering he's from the Cuban school and that he's fighting in a division in which he's always going to be at least the shorter guy is easier to hit than you would think, though he's shown a very good chin so far in his career. Jennings says that the American heavyweight to whom he's most often compared by fans is Evander Holyfield. That probably has something to do with the fact that he's relatively small compared to the 250-pounders in the division. 
and his absence of size certainly hasn't bothered him against any opposition so far. But the comparison in terms of style that I would make Max Kellerman is Ken Norton, because like Norton, he starts from a defensive base and tries to break opponents down. I can see that. I, 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 he doesn't remind me an awful lot of either one of those guys. He's a more basic fighter, which is understandable given his limited experience. Um, <laughs> in any way, if you're a fighter and you're compared to Evander Holyfield, that is a great compliment. And if you're Jennings and you're compared to Ken Norton, I, I would take that as a compliment too. If you're a human being and you're compared to Evander Holyfield, it's a tribute to your tenacity, your dedication, your will, your courage, all the things that made Evander great. One of the all-time greats. So, Perez amping up the pressure here in the second round and demonstrating that he isn't just a counterpuncher as he's seizing the initiative now in round two against Jennings. And Jennings, who got in a great right hand earlier in the round, now whacks Perez with a good left hook. Jennings is able to catch Perez in exchanges here and there with clean shots, but most of the effective scoring I've seen, most of the damage I've seen, is done by Perez so far in this fight. Time! Next Saturday, Boxing After Dark from two locations. From Atlantic City, the crusher, Sergey Kovalev, attempts to continue his knockout streak against Blake Caparello. And then from Las Vegas, all-action fighter Brandon Rios returns to the ring to face Diego Chavez in what a lot of people see as a highly competitive fight. And there is Sergey Kovalev, big fan of the sport, who shows up in a lot of boxing crowds and enjoying himself across the ring from us here tonight. Keep making him miss, embarrass him. You must embarrass him, sting. You understand? Aggressiva y nueva. Rapido. Second. Come right back. Right back, baby. Touch that body, baby. We see Jennings trying to come out more aggressively to open the third. Stop, stop, stop. Get off his head, stay off his head. Maybe an indication, Jim, that he feels he needs stop, to do something stop, stop. to change stay the way the head. fight stay has gone so far. And Perez already using leverage and positioning to move Jennings off his aggressive posture and, and into a retreat of sorts. Stop, stop, stop. Our rules expert, Steve Weisfeld, told me before the fight that Jennings and his trainer, Fred Jenkins, asked referee Harvey Dock in the dressing room before the fight to watch out for headbutts by Perez. They said he uses his head constantly. Harvey Dock said, I'll be watching you both. I like what Jennings is doing here. He's, he's being outboxed in many respects and getting hit more cleanly in the head than his opponent, so he goes to the body with both hands, and Jim, that opened up the head. Good little rally by Jennings. Once again, Perez has seized the early initiative in the round with sheer aggression. Jennings landed good some right good hand shots. by Jennings. And Perez that all winning because Jennings caught him flush. That all started, the head wasn't there for Jennings. Even though he was fighting a shorter fighter, even though he was paying a price to do it, he went with both hands methodically to Perez's body, and since then, he's had two good moments upstairs. I think he was hurt by that straight left hand by Perez. Jennings trying to come back, digging to the body with the left hand. Perez sticking his jab, trying to get it through that peekaboo defense, as Jennings holds, Jennings holds both gloves up together in the guard. Considering Perez is hittable, as I mentioned, and has been hit hard even in this fight so far. And he's not an enormous puncher himself, Jim. And he's so short for the division. Boy, he, he doesn't seem afraid to walk forward and take some of those shots. Well, 
the other applicant, along with Jennings for the momentary title of best American heavyweight is Deontay Wilder of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And if you were ever to see those two in the ring at the same time, you'd see a huge physical contrast because Wilder is six feet seven inches tall. You mean Wilder and Perez or Wilder and Jennings? Either one. No. Either Especially one Perez. Big, yeah, they'd both be big physical contrast. I love that run. And look, and they're right up because you're giving me a bucket. Give me a bucket. Where's the bucket? Your mouth out. Mm -hmm. Stop right here. Mm -hmm. Drink it. Drink it. Ready. for this, so just relax now. Three rounds to nil to you. Be clean now. Listen, you listen, you listen. If he doesn't touch you now, his mind will start to hurt him. You understand? Okay? Aggressive. Second out. You get rapid out. contra. Come show. Come Adam show. Booth is very sparing in offering instructions to a fighter uh, between rounds. He appears to like to give one instruction and leave it at that. Through round three of their 57 total connects, 47 of them are power punches. You saw between rounds that the CompuBox numbers through three are virtually equal. Our unofficial yeah. ringside scorer is the great one, Harold yes, Letterman. Yes, sir, sir. Harold, how do you have it so far? <laughs> okay, Jim, three to nothing, 30 to 27, Mike Perez. You know, Jim, I gotta say something. You can't be Ken Norton unless you drag your right leg. <laughs> Yeah, you always drag that right leg behind. And have anyway, a crab defense. Let, yeah, let's get back to the fight. I, I thought that, you know, Mike Perez outworked him around one and two. Round three was a little bit closer. Jennings started off with a couple of really nice, uh, good shots with both hands. I, you know, I thought he did some damage earlier in the round. But Perez took it away in the, in the second half of the uh, round three. So I thought Perez won the third round also. Three to nothing, Perez, based on clean punching. I could see giving the third to Perez. I suspect um, Jennings is... Jennings won the third on at least one card, is my suspicion. Well, I think it, it may not have been a particularly easy three rounds to score, but in each of the three rounds, Perez has presented the appearance of being the aggressor, and that is what probably will help him at this point. Interesting that when Booth told Perez start embarrassing him, which I take to mean embarrass him defensively in counterpunch, Perez interpreted that, or at least went out, and started stalking Jennings. Gave Jennings more of a target, and Jennings had a lot of offensive success, especially late in the third round. Adam Booth had an exceptionally graphic and evocative description of Bryant Jennings yesterday in our fighter meeting. Max Kellerman, you responded immediately to it. What was it that Booth said about it? Said that Jennings looks like an actor who's been taught, you know, who's acting boxing. He's an actor in a film about boxing. Um, I know what he means. He, and he's really talking about his inexperience and the fact that Jennings makes certain basic moves again and again, but looks pretty good doing it. Looked pretty good chasing Perez to the ropes there with a left hook and a right cross didn't land solidly with either punch, but managed to get Perez off of it. He also looks like he has to think a little bit more before he acts. And, and that's also common of typical of fighters without deep amateur background. Good shots from Jennings, and a brace of body shots to close out the round. With Perez at his hands, at his sides. There's Gennady Golovkin, his hands being wrapped by Abel Sanchez. Sanchez was the man who trained Mike Perez for each of his last two fights prior to this one, but now his focus is back to 100% Gennady Golovkin as he prepares Golovkin for the middleweight showdown later tonight against Daniel Gill. And here's Daniel Gill, 10,000 miles away from his home in Sydney, Australia. His origins are actually on the Australian island of Tasmania. And Gil 
is hoping for a better result tonight than in his last visit to the United States last summer when he lost a very close split decision to Darren Barker in Atlantic City in a brilliant fight, in which close, was you among go many work. candidates for fight of the year last year. Let's go, deep breath. You gotta go to Back, back, back to you know, Jim, to close that last round, Perez had his hands at his side. And some people can get themselves loose doing that, some fighters, and they're trying to embarrass their opponent, but you gotta wonder with Perez, is that fatigue? Especially when, as soon as he does it, Jennings clips him upstairs. Good left hand inside by Perez. Jennings once again turns to look at Harvey Dock, indicating that he doesn't like something that Perez is doing on the inside. Whether he had his foot on Jennings' foot or whether he had his arm wrapped around Jennings' left arm, Bryant wanted to talk to the referee. Perez is breathing through his mouth more now. His hands are lower than they were earlier in the fight. And against Takam his last time out, Perez did very well in the first half of the fight and looked gassed throughout the second half of the fight. Credited, him, credited Adam Booth with helping him get into better shape, better condition for this fight. But here, Jim, it actually looks like he's starting to show that same kind of fatigue right around the same time of the fight. To come, very much like Marcus Maidana against Floyd Mayweather, seemed to shock Perez in the second half of that fight by landing shots from odd, sometimes absurd angles over the top, up from the floor, but they were landing nevertheless and doing damage. Those shots are easier to land against a guy breathing through his mouth who's a little fatigued, who's giving you an easier target because you can conserve energy by dropping your hands. So off his head. Two good left hands for Jenny or for uh, Perez. Jennings comes back with a couple of body shots. Perez fires a body shot of his own. And now another left hand upstairs. Good exchange, but Perez getting the better of it. And when they trade punches like that in the center of the ring, one thing that seems frequently to show up is Perez's greater quickness and fluidity, his ability to release his hands more rapidly than does Bryant Jennings. He doesn't have to think as much about what he's doing, and therefore he's able to think faster. Good That's for by Jennings. And, and Perez has been doing this. He's been blowing kisses whenever he's tagged with a good shot. And I take that as the equivalent of a fighter shaking his head no after he's been tagged, when really what he means is, yeah, you got me. Totally agree. August 5, it's the premiere of Hard Knocks, training camp of the Atlanta Falcons. Five weeks of unequaled access as we follow stars like Roddy White and Julio Jones, as well as unknown rookies simply trying to make the team. That's Rudy Hernandez. Just working on time. the left Understand? eye of Mike Perez. Pressing down hard with the end swell as Adam Booth once again, relatively few words. Here's Perez having his way with Jennings, but then getting sloppy. Is it fatigue? Because when he gets sloppy, drops his hands. Jennings tags him clean. There with the right uppercut, left hook. That was an excellent combination for a relatively inexperienced fighter. It was. Power shots in round five. Jennings 12 out of 22. That's 55%. Perez 10 out of 32. 31%. So the fight very gradually may be swinging in favor of Bryant Jennings as Perez seems to be running just a little short of gas compared to where he was in rounds one through three. And now we'll see for those who favored Jennings in this fight. And opinion was split. Maybe Jennings had slightly more support. 
among boxing types. So it's it's this now. It's the, it's this moment now in the fight where set, set. Perez starts to look a little fatigued. Let's go. We're about halfway through. Can Jennings impose that competitive spirit and athleticism starting in the second half of this fight? That's what he did in his December date against Archer Spielka. He waited for Spielka to get wild and lose form as he tired late in the fight and took Brilliant advantage of it in the late rounds, ultimately scoring a 10th round knockout. He, he doesn't look discouraged so far, in spite of the fact that in the majority of these rounds, I think Perez has gotten the better of it. Well, Harold Letterman has scored the last two rounds unofficially for Brian Jennings, narrowing the margin on the Letterman scorecard, the three rounds to two. And we're reaching the midway point of the fight in a minute and 20 seconds. Body shot by Perez. Perez not putting his punches together nearly as much as was the case in the first few rounds. And Perez letting his hands drop to his sides. He's fighting a 220-plus pound man with his hands at his sides within punching range. Then he gets tagged to the right hand. It wasn't a big one, but he blows a kiss. Great left hand for Perez, barging through Jennings' guard. Two more examples of... Perez simply getting off quicker than Brian Jennings. Yeah, he, he clips Jennings with a 1-2, slips any counters, 1-2, gets out of punching range again, does that for large swaths of these rounds, and then at some point drops his hands and accepts unnecessary punishment, it seems. Found himself on the ropes. Steps right off at an angle. Good lead left hand. Destroying Jennings' timing. Good one, two. Body shot underneath the guard. All of that for Mike Perez. And yet Jennings just keeps doing what he's doing. Terrence Crawford defeated Yuri Orcus Gamboa June 28 in his hometown of Omaha, Nebraska. Ninth round knockout in a fight in which Crawford clearly lost the first four rounds to Yuri Orcus Gamboa, seen by many ringside experts as the fight of the year so far in 2014. What a performance for Crawford, who was virtually unknown 15 months ago and may be, at this moment, the leading candidate for fighter of the year. Of the star making performance. We're hoping to see Terrence Crawford again against a good opponent yeah, later on this year. No touch. No. Aggressive. Copy no. box numbers in, in round Nueva. six. It was a slow round for Brian Jennings, who landed only five out of 26. It was a much more active round for Mike Perez, who landed 12 out of 45 and seemed to re-establish some of the initiative he showed earlier in the fight. Harold, how do you have it halfway through? Okay, Jim, I've got it four rounds to two, 58, 56, Mike Perez. You know, Jim, in rounds uh, four and five, I thought Brian Jennings came back. I thought he was going to take over this fight. But in round six, Mike Perez threw all the good shots. I mean, Brian Jennings did very little in the sixth round. Hey, he's starting well in the seventh round. You know, Jim, if Brian Jennings looks a little bit different, the New York State Athletic Commission made him shave. You know, he had a long beard. And with a beard, if you could scratch the other guy or if it cushions the punches, it's illegal. So they made him shave. Four to two, Mike Perez. That left hook with which Jennings whacked Perez while Harold was speaking. One of his best punches in the fight so far. Good body shot with the right hand by Jennings. Jennings obviously aware that he fell asleep a little bit in the sixth round and needs to bring back some activity here in the seventh. Speaking of beards, Perez showing a good one because Jennings has hit him with some really clean shots in this round and Perez is able to shake him off. Off the, turn around, turn around. At the start of this fight, Jim, that 
Perez will be sure. active if, if its opponent is active and less active if his opponent is less active. And I think we saw some of that in the last round. Jennings didn't throw a lot of shots. Perez didn't either, and so it was Perez's round. But I think Perez was doing certain things in the last round to keep Jennings passive. Well, and I think that profile of fighting off of the other guy's energy level and fighting at the pace established by his opponent may change for Perez now with the new trainer, Adam Booth. Adam Booth clearly wants to bring more energy out of Mike Perez, clearly has him in better condition than we've seen before, and is trying to get him to seize more of the initiative in his fights. If, if, you, if Perez wants to slow down the pace, I think in the last round he showed he can. I don't think that's all up to Jennings. Upset Jennings' timing, box smartly, push him back at times, slide off to the side at times, keep his hands at home through a, uh, through a variety of tactics. You know, Copy box numbers in this round, one-sidedly in favor of Bryant Jennings. 18 power punches landed in the round. That's by far, numerically, the best round so far for Jennings. Yep, and, and as part of that is Jennings coming alive, and part of that is Perez not doing some of those things to keep Jennings more passive than he did in the last round. Question now is, trailing four rounds to three, I suspect, on Harold Letterman's unofficial scorecard, did Jennings invest well enough in that round to have an effect on the remainder of the fight? I remember one thing. You got to keep working. You keep, you keep working. You can't tie him up. Spit this out. Pull your hands to yourself. Keep your hands off him. Keep your hands off him and just keep working your hands, man. Keep working. And punch downstairs, okay? You listening? You listening? Either Mueva or use that uppercut. When he dropped down, use that uppercut, Mueva, and then you must go to his body. Understand? See, in this round, Jim, here's Perez kind of just hanging out on the inside, not doing much, and it allows the much longer arm Jennings to actually get the better of the inside action with nice short punches. Here he finds Perez on the end of a punch. That in stark contrast to the previous round where Perez was throwing nice crisp little one-twos, sliding off at an angle, upsetting Jennings' timing. That left hook was a tremendous chance for Jennings to hurt Perez, but he didn't turn the punch over. Landed it flat. Jennings landed 19 out of 48 power shots in round seven after throwing just 25 punches in the sixth round. Elbow down. Philadelphians in the crowd trying to lift Bryant Jennings a little bit right now. Coming off a good round. When Perez is purposeful, he does much better for himself. But that requires mental energy, and that's actually a, attached to conditioning. See here, he, even if he wants to tie Jennings up, then tie him up. Do it purposefully. Keep him up, keep him up. Oftentimes, Perez is just kind of hanging out on the inside, giving Jennings chances. Young referee Harvey Dock becoming more and more a factor here as Mike Perez starts wrapping his arms around Bryant Jennings. That's clean. Sup, sup. Elbow down. Keep it down. Well, it's a pretty good little scrap here in Madison Square Garden. But Max, I'll be honest. I haven't seen anything that would cause Vladimir Klitschko to lose a second of sleep. No. In fact, he may be sleeping through this fight if he's watching exactly it right, right now. Exactly right. Somewhere in Europe, he may have nodded off. What? It's been a long time, Jim, Don't since we've had an American heavyweight who on a high level consistently put guys to sleep. And those are the fighters, you know, with the exception of Muhammad Ali, those have been all of the most popular heavyweight champions. Well, the winner of this fight, in theory, becomes the mandatory for the winner of an upcoming fight between Bermain Stiburn and Deontay Wilder. If Wilder were able to beat Stiburn, and Wilder at this point has 31 knockouts in a row, he's the put the guy oh. to sleep kind of fighter. Good shot by Jennings. A right hand counter as Perez was forcing him back that made Perez do a little dance. Let's go. 
You want to know why Perez takes such a good punch? Look at the size of those legs. They're huge. Yeah, I mean, it helped. I, it really helped them stay on that's balance. What got, that's what got him through 10 rounds with Magomed Abdusalama, taking some giant, hellacious shots from Abdusalama throughout that fight. Good body shot by Jennings with the right hand. Another good body shot. Right hand and a left hook upstairs. Brian Jennings rallying again, now in the closing seconds of round number eight. Time. And that may have evened the fight. Daniel Gill is tonight's identity holder as the best opponent yet for Gennady Golovkin. We've said that about two or three of Golovkin's opponents up to this point, <coughs> but there's no question that Gill occupies that identity. As Gennady Golovkin himself says, it's a former title holder. He's an outstanding fighter with a tremendous amateur record. And Golovkin went out of his way to say, I don't expect to get a knockout tonight. I expect the fight to go to distance, and I expect to have to work to win a decision. Is he taking pressure off himself? I think he's being uh, sportsmanlike. Here we see Perez coming forward with his hands down, throwing punches, but Jennings is a competitor. And Guy has his hands down throwing punches, let me take some shots. One of the reasons, Jim, that he's doing that good inside work but not turning the shots over is given the length of his arms and the close quarters at which that's contested, if he wants to land the shot, he has to alter the way he's supposed to throw it. In the last two rounds, Brian Jennings by CompuBox count has landed 35 power stop, shots stop. to 16 for Mike Perez. Harold Letterman after six rounds unofficially had it four rounds to two for Jennings. Based on the numbers and what we've seen in the last two rounds, I'm guessing that the fight is even on the Letterman scorecard right now, and there you see it, 76 apiece. Now Perez trying to disrupt Jennings rhythm by coming in behind one looping shot, usually a right hand, holding Jennings, tying up at least one of his arms. When Jennings thinks they're in a clinch, Perez releases, throws another shot or two. But Jennings, competitive guy as I mentioned, just keeps going about his business. Pretty good inside, despite the fact that his arms, measured from the armpit to the end of the fist, are four and a half inches longer than those of Mike Perez. That should be a deficiency on the inside. Makes it harder for him to find room to get his punches off, but he's been able to do it through various portions of the fight, and that's why he's right in there with Mike Perez as we come to the ninth. And he lands them cleanly, but as I mentioned, as a result, not with as much torque as you'd like to see from a fighter on the inside. He has to sacrifice that in order to land them cleanly. to lull him into a state of thinking they're really in a clinch release and land something sneaky on the inside. And that time Jennings had a good idea trying to catch Ryan, uh, Perez with a right hand as Perez was coming in. Sure, and, and Jennings knows at this point Perez's hands are generally going to be down. Kind of a scratchy round. Good Not a lot of it. clean punching on either side. How you feel, sir? I need a little more work. Yeah, we're good. I need a little more work. So what, man? Big dude, we got to fight, man. You letting him hold you, man. All you got to do is keep stepping back and punching. Pull your hands out and let him go. He's not coming you, forward. He, 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 step back. When you push, you step back and let your punches go. Don't wrap him up. Keep your hands. You're aggressive, and then you move. 
and you use your skill, perfect. When you come close, you must be first. Do you understand that? What? Go, what? Do you understand? Go. Yeah. Mike, mm -hmm. do you understand? If you're close, you must you must be first, and it closes him. Do you understand? Second up. Come, Shield. Adam Booth is speaking English. That's a second language for Mike Perez. Perez, raised in Cuba, Spanish is his first language, but he's lived in Ireland for five years now. So you have to assume that he speaks English almost exclusively with his mates and his neighbors and the people with whom he lives in Ireland. And let's turn to Irish Harold Letterman and see what his score is <laughs> okay, in nine rounds. 86, 85, five rounds to four, Brian, bye-bye Jennings. You know, Jim, they got an expression in boxing. You ride the guy across the ring. That's what Mike Perez is doing. That's all he's doing. He's getting, you know, he's much heavier. He leans on Brian Jennings and he rides him across the ring, trying to tie around Jennings. Watch this. Now, here he goes. He's going to ride him back towards us. You see? That's what he does all night long. I mean, the last three rounds, he's doing nothing but riding the guy across the ring. I think Mike Perez is tired. I think that Jennings landed the cleanest shots to take the lead. Five to four after nine. And you heard Fred Jenkins, 43-year veteran of the sport, Jennings trainer ever since he took up boxing, telling Jennings exactly what to do with what it is that Perez is doing to him. Pull well, back, know, pull your hands out, fire away. And, and step back and throw punches, because when Jennings does that, he has success. Um, Harold's right, Perez in the last several rounds especially is riding him back. I don't, w by the way, why Mike Perez doesn't take the nickname Irish Mike Perez? It's right there for him. It's better than the Rebel. Rebel. Come on. Because of Cork? Mike. Keep him up, well, if, Keep him up. It would be one thing if he were fighting in Ireland and the nickname Rebel would be bonding him to right. his Cork crowd. But he's fighting in the United States where the nickname Irish Mike Perez is, you can't miss. Speaks, speaks English with a Spanish accent, on, a Cuban accent, on top of that layered an Irish brogue. It's awesome. <laughs> Meantime, neither fighter in this fight, you used an interesting word to describe last round, scratchy. Neither fighter in this fight has really been able to impose their game plan, what it is they want to do. They're, they're going move to move, moment to moment. Neither one really being able to clearly establish an advantage. Suddenly Jennings in a southpaw stance. Jabbing with the right hand. And now that, that lines him up. Southpaw to southpaw against Perez. Maybe giving him a chance to use his left hand as a power shot. This is interesting. I haven't seen Bryant bye-bye Jennings turn southpaw for an extended period of time before. But there it is. Well, I mean, we saw Terrence Crawford do that, who's obviously great at switching up. Southpaw to Orthodox. When Gamboa was having success with a looping right hand upstairs, Jennings has had the same kind of success. And that was Excuse me, Perez has had. Perez landed a couple of body shots, but Jennings landed a, a series of jabs after switching into the southpaw stance. Okay. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Next. Only two to go. You understand? <clears throat> two to go. Have a little bit. Your conditioning is there. Take your breath. Your conditioning is there so your work can have good quality. Do you understand? Do you understand? Aggressive and move your head. When you come close, you must go first. Do you Here's Mike Perez kind of just hanging out on the inside, Jim. Tying Jennings up, yeah, but not with real purpose. And they're just seeming to lose concentration. Jennings trying to do what his corner instructs. Step back, create a little space, and clip him with a right hand. Copybox numbers through the 10th round show that Jennings has landed 120 punches now to only 92 for Perez. So Jennings, with a higher connect percentage and a higher number of punches landed, is beginning to put Copybox distance between himself and Mike Perez. Neither fighter has been past the 10th round before. And as we come to the 11th. And as I was mentioning, the Crawford-Gamboa fight being hit, also by a Cuban southpaw, with some looping lead right hands. Crawford turned southpaw, and I think that helped, helped him get a better look at that right hand. 
The right hand was, as a result, not as close to him. So he had a longer look at the right hand, kind of like a right-handed hitter facing a, a left-handed pitcher. It was fascinating because we were working with Roy Jones that night. My take on Roy's expertise as a commentator, he's almost never wrong. The instant that Crawford turned to the southpaw stance, Roy said, this is a mistake. He's going to get hit with too many right hands. Sure enough, immediately he got clocked with three or four right hands, but then gradually took over the fight. And clearly the switch to the southpaw stance facilitated that. Jennings is doing well with it, but now he's gone back to the conventional stance. And you see Perez also has that competitor in him when just as you think the play is really being taken away, he stands his ground and fires real shots back. Just never has not appeared in the last couple fights to be in the kind of condition he really needs to be in. And Perez backed up to the ropes by himself at that moment, and Jennings stepped forward and whacked him both sides of the ribcage, demonstrating, I'm in charge here. Now, here Perez more purposeful on the inside. Moving Jennings where he wants. Good one-two, but then a grab by Perez. Yeah. He had some moments there, though, where he was doing real inside work with a purpose, even in terms of positioning Jennings' arms to open up shots. Good uppercut by Jennings on the inside. Let him go, let him go. Knocking Perez's head back, even as the former Cuban star leans in, leans in, trying to keep his weight on Jennings all the time. Perez has landed some good hard body shots in this round too, even when they're partially or mostly deflected, they're still landing on a body part with authority. Thirty seconds left in a round that seems to be up for grabs. Deep breath. You got it. Hey, Ryan, cut it. Do it, dude. Drink this. Work. Cut that tape on his glove. There you yeah, go. Yeah, but you, Thank you. You, you working, but you ain't you ain't you ain't pivoting on the man. You keep letting him fall in and yeah, grab right. you. After shit. you punch, he's gonna grab you. So you know he's gonna grab you, jump back and let your dumb punches shit, go. Dumb shit, you right. Yeah. You, you, you gotta get dumb like him, man. Let your shots go. Let your shots go, baby. Leave you, this, you letting him hold you. Work hard for this, baby. You work yeah, hard for this now. You gotta finish. Come on, man. Here, Perez just standing there with his arms down. Jennings says, okay, I'll oblige. Throws some, a couple hard body shots and one that's straight low. And here, right hand free, so Jennings uses it. Steps back, creates a little space after the two body shots with the right hand and lands a clean uppercut. Round 12 of a scheduled 12. First time into the 12th round for either fighter. Brian Jennings. Trying to remain unbeaten. Trying to self, put himself in position for a possible heavyweight title shot. And so one far... One title belt not held by Vladimir Klitschko. Go ahead, Max. So far, it's been an okay fight, but an uninspiring one. But they both came out in this round, the last round, with a lot more inspiration. Let's see if either can sustain it. like this, Jim, is where the Jennings supporters expect him to do what he has to do. But at this moment, he looks confused. He does. He doesn't look as though, as though he knows exactly what it is he wants to do. That's it. That's it. And now let's see what Harvey Dock is going to do. He's going to take a point away. One point. Keep it clean. And that point will badly hurt Mike Perez in what might be a close fight. The penalty was for pushing Jennings' head down too many times. Harvey Dock has talked about it, talked about it, and now finally Perez loses a point. 
Jim, at any point did you hear him say the next time it's going to cost you a point? I have not heard that. No. Me neither. I don't love keep that. Up, keep I, I think if you're going to deduct a point, you got to give him that kind of warning in, in a close fight. There's a good solid left hand by Perez trying to come back now that he's lost a point in the round. Our rules expert right. Steve Weisfeld has an interpretation as to why Doc removed the point from Mike Perez. Steve, come in now. Harvey Doc indicated before that it, if it's an intentional foul, he is going to take one point away, and that certainly seemed intentional to me. He hit uh, Jennings on the break, and it was pretty clear one point was warranted. Okay, so there's a clear explanation from our rules expert who says that he heard Harvey Doc make the warning. Oh, if he gave him that warning, then it's fair. It's a huge point for Jennings, who seems to be falling apart just a little bit in exactly the moment when his fans are wanting him to seal the deal. What? Step back. Stop leaning on it. Harvey Doc says stop leaning on it. That point could be huge and could make up in a way for a round in which you'd figure Jennings to sustain a little more of that frenetic energy that he showed in the first 30 seconds. And now Steve Weisfeld is telling us that it was during pre-fight instructions that Harvey Doc issued what amounts to the warning that ultimately led to the point. That's why you and I did not hear it, Max. I think that warrants a, a hard warning about the point deduction before you go ahead and take the point. Usually that's what happens. Now Adam Booth is talking to Harvey Doc about exactly that subject. And the one time he makes a mistake, you take it off the floor. All the time. You answer, you answer, you answer. Very low. Very low. Bad referee. Let's take a look at a replay of the incident that caused the one-point deduction right here. Okay. So Perez is throwing the one-two, gets in with his head. He's looking to the ref, and maybe Harvey Doc. He it, what may have been the case is that he said break or stop as Perez was in the motion already of throwing that punch. It's possible. Yeah, right. Maybe a, a split second before. Kind of a lowercase version of what James Kirkland was able to do to Glenn Tapia at the end of their fight in Atlantic City last year when referee Steve Smoker could not prevent James Kirkland from getting in one last shot. That's all that Harold, this fight had in common with that one, Jim. Harold, what did you do with round 12? Jim, I, I tell you, I thought Mike Perez won the round. They took away a point, so it becomes a 9-9 to nine round. I mean, in my estimation, I absolutely hate to see a fight where, where a fight is won or lost on a referee's call, especially a call like that. That call was atrocious. It was absolutely unwarranted, uncalled for. Harvey Doc got some nerve doing it. He absolutely shouldn't have done it. There was no clear-cut foul where Harvey Doc should have jumped in and taken a point that cost Mike Perez a fight. That was absolutely, positively atrocious. And that's all there is to it. And let's underline the point, Harold, that on your scorecard, was the difference that in point the fight. is the difference we in the fight. We didn't see yes. Perez and Jennings. We saw Harvey Doc. He was the difference in the fight. And nobody wants to see that, Jim. Who are the three official judges who will okay. have to score this one? Okie dokie. Let's go to the three official judges. Okay, Glenn Feldman is the first one. Uh, you know, he's had his ups and downs. Uh, I like him a lot. He's from Connecticut. He had uh, Timothy Bradley over one, Manuel Marquez. Uh, he had it, well, he had it 115, 113 for Marquez in that fight. Uh, I thought Bradley won, but generally Glenn's okay. Joe Pasquale, Jim, is absolutely, without question, the best judge in New Jersey. This is a guy that really, really sees the fight virtually every time. It, you know, he sees it right. He had the 96-94 for Thomas Delorme over Kareem Hart hit at Mayfield. He was 100% correct. Horrible fight. Tom Shrek, also, ups and downs. Uh, he had it 114-112 for Chris Algieri. You know, that was the controversy of the year. Did Algieri's boxing do enough to beat uh, Provodnikov's clean hard punch? Uh, Tom went with, uh, with Algieri in that fight. And they're still tabulating the scores here at ringside for 
Mike Perez against Bryant Jennings. And despite the amount of time that we've taken to give you Harold's unofficial scorecard, his thoughts about the one-point deduction in the 12th round, and the bios of all three official judges, they still have not finished totaling up the final scores. Incidentally, I don't think it's atrocious to take a point for that level of foul, though probably it shouldn't be done, but you have to give the guy a warning ahead of time. It has to be a repeat offense where the referee makes clear I'm Michael taking a Buffer's point if it ready at ringside again. right now, Max. So let's throw it up to Michael and find out who won the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, from the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden, we go to the scorecards. Tom Schreck scores at 114, 113 for Perez. Joe Pasquale scores at 115, 112. He has it for Jennings. And Glenn Feldman scores at 114, 113 to the winner by split decision from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ryan, bye bye, Jenny! Ultimately, the one point deduction is in fact the difference in the fight. It would have been a draw had it not been for that deduction. But because of the one point deduction, and the resulting scorecard of 114-113 for Jennings, identical to Harold Letterman's unofficial scorecard. Brian Jennings winds up with a split decision in the fight, and Mike Perez has, if you wish to see it this way, a hard lock loss. Final CompuBox numbers, and they should show something of an advantage for Jennings, who was more active in the latter part of the fight. He lands 33 more punches, throwing 58 fewer and therefore landing at a significantly higher overall connect percentage. Power shots. Jennings lands 32 more while throwing 17 more and landing at a significantly higher connect percentage. 